قل أوحي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا وأنه تعالى جد ربنا ما اتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأنه كان يقول سفيهنا على الله شططا وأنا ظننا أن لن تقول الإنس والجن على الله كذبا وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رهقا وأنهم ظنوا كما ظننتم أن لن يبعث الله أحدا وأنا لمسنا السماء فوجدناها ملئت حرسا شديدا وشهبا وأنا كنا نقعد منها مقاعد للسمع فمن يستمع الآن يجد له شهابا رصدا وأنا لا ندري أشر أريد بمن في الأرض أم أراد بهم ربهم رشدا وأنا منا الصالحون ومنا دون ذلك كنا طرائق قددا يا الله إني ناديتك وسعيت إني استهديتك فهديت بالقرآن أنرت طريق
is a powerful example I want to give you right now it makes me shiver when I think my brothers and sisters do you know the population of the globe at the moment is more than it ever was before do you agree and the population of Muslims on earth who make sujood for Allah is more than it ever was from the beginning of humanity to this day I promise you, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. The deen of Allah is solid. It is strong. Yes, we do have problems. We will manage them by the help of Allah. We do have crises. Do not be despondent. We do have splits. We do have disunity. But by the help of Allah, if we keep on reminding people of our duties unto one another, to speak with each other with respect, to be able to react correctly when things go wrong, when things don't go the way we'd like them to go, then we will definitely be serving the deen. There is a lot to hope for. Look at this masjid, my brothers and sisters. I want to let you know the masjid is packed to capacity. Isn't that a sign that we are connected to Allah? Why lose hope? This is the house of Allah. We are about to put our heads on the ground for Allah. I'm going to put my head on the ground, inshallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not once, but so many times. Whereas those magicians at the time of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, they were evil people. But when they turned to the deen and when they made one prostration, not two, not five, one prostration for Allah, Allah says, we wiped out all their sins, granted them Jannah in return. If one prostration could wipe out everything they did, my brothers and sisters, I've made thousands of prostrations. May Allah accept at least one. So have you. So have all of us. Smile. There is hope. Allah is Rabbun Ghafoor. Allah is most merciful. Allah is the most forgiving, the most beneficent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this part of Perspectives. Uh, we hope that you've had a wonderful and productive day. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to bring this message of Islam to you year after year. Perspectives, we've been here for so long. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that coming down to the day of judgment, the time will go by really, really fast. And we've, we're seeing it just now, not long from now, another year will come to an end with this program of perspectives. And all we have been doing over the years is bringing the message of Islam to you, telling you that there is a creator existing who, will, who we will have to go back and give account for how we live this life. This is the message of Islam, to believe that there is a law existing and this brings to mind a story. Once a, an atheist, he told a Muslim that, you know, he said, suppose you die and you go to your grave only to see that all of these believing in God and prayers and so on, that is not true. The Muslim said, well, it, it will not be as bad as if you go to your grave and discover that it is true. Allah <laughs> So, alhamdulillah, this is our message. We've been promoting peace and love and understanding amongst people regardless of race, regardless of religion. We've been preaching tolerance and we've been forwarding this peaceful message into the land of ours called Guyana. We're living in a beautiful country. And let us strive to keep it that way. So tonight with me, I have Maulana Abu Bakr once again. And he has a very important message for us tonight, inshallah. So without further ado, uh, Mawlana, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah khair. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi al Kareem, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. All praise are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah Jalla wa Ala and we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we beg Allah Jalla wa Ala to shower his salutations and blessings upon our dear beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we beg Allah Jalla wa Ala at this time 
when our hearts are together and our iman inshallah will rise at this moment inshallah of togetherness and unity where we share one concern for the glory and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we beg Allah jalla wa ala humbly and sincerely to have mercy upon the whole world mm -hmm. we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together for the children of the world for the orphans of the world for the sick and the oppressed and the wrongfully imprisoned for the beleaguered lands and the bloodstained lands of war around the world and at this time subhanallah this blessed time is the glorious month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues of the hijjah we beg Allah jalla wa ala for the hajj of the hujjaj karam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may accept every footstep every prayer every tear every drop of perspiration and sweat that was offered Allahu Akbar every drop of blood of every animal that was offered during the glorious time of Hajj and the glorious Allahu Akbar moments of sacrifice around the world we beg Allah Jalla wa ala to accept the Hajj of the Hujjaj Karam and the Umrah of the Mu'tamireen and the Adahi and the sacrifices that were offered from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for the whole world may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant acceptance and safety in the return of the Hujjaj Karam as they have returned and are still returning around the world there are those Subhanallah who went to Hajj on foot and they Allahu Akbar were traveling on land by foot for six months to get to Hajj, Allahu Akbar, retracing the footsteps of Hajra alayhi salatu wasalam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and his son Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their Hajj. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu will make Hajj also on foot. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu made Hajj on foot. Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu made Hajj, Allahu Akbar, ten Hajj on foot. La ilaha illallah. And so the pilgrimage to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah is glorious, it is beautiful, and it is about sacrifice. It is about making a sacrifice that will change your life. Because it will, Allahu Akbar, uplift you, purify you, and establish a new realm in your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will bring forth a new reality in your spiritual world and as well in your physical world because what happens Allahu Akbar whatever happens in the spiritual world resonates in the physical world and it's not the opposite subhanallah for Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond this realm of physicality and physiology and so subhanallah our spirituality is most important and depending on our spirituality it determines our connection our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى that actions are but by intentions Allahu Akbar so the physical act is important but what is behind it the driving force the impetus the source of that action the perspective that you have brought to fore in that activity that you have endured that you have engaged in that you have executed that you have completed subhanallah the mentality the spirituality the philosophy the theology the ideology whatever is the driving force behind it the perspective that you hold that is the weight of the act if you have done it Allahu Akbar for show then it is shallow and it is simplistic and it is limited Allahu Akbar but if it is done for the glory of Allah Jalla wa ala, then in its reality it is enduring it is infinite it is everlasting its blessings will begin here but it will not end in this physical existence it will continue with you inshallah until the next life throughout the next life inshallah thumma inshallah that is why it is called the baraka baraka Allahu Akbar, our intentions brings about the Barakah. The Barakah is literally translated in a limited way as the blessings. But the Barakah is a very powerful and a very encompassing word in Arabic. Because it comes from the Arabic word of Barakat, which means that the camel has sat. And when you say the camel has sat, it means that she's not going to move now. That when you were traveling, when the Arabs used to travel through the desert, the camels will go with them. But if one of them sits, once she has sat, you can't have her move again. You have to wait on her to move. Because Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, 
people do what they do because of what they think. They don't do what they do. Allahu Akbar. And camels are similar in nature. And so if a camel sits, there is no way you can get her to stand up and to get going again. You have to wait on her. And so the blessings of Allah Jalla wa ala is akin to that in its nature, in that it stays with you. The barakah, the blessing of Allah Jalla wa ala stay with you. It stays with you, so it's called the barakah. And so what you have done in this life, Allahu Akbar, will stay with you. The blessings of Allah Jalla wa ala will be with you throughout this life, throughout the grave. Throughout the 50,000 years of the Day of Judgment and forever after, insha'Allah, thumma insha'Allah. And so as we have completed the Qurbani and the Eid al-Adha and we have killed the animals and offered the animals and made the prayer and distributed the meat, mashallah, in Guyana I think everyone has eaten the meat, alhamdulillah. And we beg Allah Jalla wa ala to accept everyone that has made the sacrifice on behalf of everyone that has made the sacrifice and everyone that has shared this meat out and to every home that it has reached and in every pot that it was cooked and in every mouth that it went and in every body that it went, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow his barakah because the Muslim is a conduit. You are a conduit. You are an instrument of the mercy of Allah Jalla wa ala. And this meat, inshallah, thumma inshallah, is a blessing from Allah Jalla wa ala. And so may it be a blessing and it be an accepted blessing for every single person that has eaten of this meat, inshallah, thumma inshallah. And so in Guyana, alhamdulillah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has fed the nation once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Say ameen. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, Allahu Akbar, what we do in this life, whatever you do in this life, the physicality of it, the act matters, but what matters even more is the mindset behind it. Why did you do this, Allahu Akbar? Why did you do this? And I give you a simple example, subhanAllah, that the people in front of the masjid would bring their animals. They would come on their camels, they'll come on their horses, they'll come on their donkeys. And they will go into the masjid to pray. Allahu Akbar. They will go into the masjid to pray. And so one man thought that, Allahu Akbar, people are coming with their camels, they need to have something to tie their horses on and their rides on. And so he put a stick in the ground. He put a stick in the ground, and so the people would come and they would tie their horses or camels or whatever on that on that subhanallah on that picket that he put there and then so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him mashallah I'm sure Allahu Akbar that the good mindset that is behind the act he was blessed for that subhanallah and then one man passed by one night and he stumped his toe in the dark he stumped his toe on the picket and so he said to himself how dare someone put something like this here and so he pulled it out so that no one else may stump their toe. And he too got blessings, subhanAllah. And so the one that put it there got the blessings, Allahu Akbar, of a good deed. And for the benefit that he offered, subhanAllah. And the one that removed it, Allahu Akbar, he too got blessings, subhanAllah. He received the blessings from Allah Jalla wa ala, for that too was a good deed. The action of the first and the second person are completely different. They are actually opposed. One did one thing and one did the opposite. Allahu Akbar. But because of their mindset, because of their intention, Allahu Akbar, they were both rewarded. La ilaha illallah. And so your intention is very important. Your intention, Allahu Akbar, is extremely important in this life. Because you are special. You as a human being is very special. This whole world, beloved brothers and sisters, was created for you. The clouds... The moon, the stars, Tabarakalli Jala fi Sama Iburuja, Wajala fiha Siraja and Wakamara Munira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al Farhan the entire heavenly system, the planetary system, the sun and the moon, everything, subhanAllah, that all of this, Allah Akbar, the changing Layla wa nahar khilfatan, Allahu Akbar, day and night as opposite, one turning into the other. All of the system, Allah Jalla wa ala explained in the Holy Quran. Is for you, la ilaha illallah, liman arada an yadhakkara aw arada shukura. It is for the believer who wishes this whole system of life, this whole system of existence is special for you, la ilaha illallah. The system of life is not for the cows. This moon, these stars, this heaven, this earth, this sun, Allahu Akbar, 
the changing of the tides, the clouds, the coming of rain, Allahu Akbar. This whole system is because of you. It is for you, subhanAllah. And you, Allahu Akbar, are very, you are very special. And the special nature of mankind is demonstrated by the fact that every single creation upon the face of the earth is subservient. It is inferior. It is secondary to the man, to humankind, to mankind. It is secondary, Allahu Akbar. Every single thing upon the face of the earth is subservient to you. That mankind, Allahu Akbar, he takes out a human being, he takes out a piece of rock from the ground and he subjects it to heat and he, he turns it into steel or iron and then he works on that iron and he applies his sciences and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes that metal to fly in the sky. Allahu Akbar. He takes it from the earth and he works on it and it can fly. Allahu Akbar. That every single thing in this world has been placed under the mastery of mankind. It is under your ownership. You can master everything of this earth. Earth, Allahu Akbar, may appear to be so much and so great and so powerful, which it is, Allahu Akbar, but you are greater and you are more powerful and you are even more special. You look at the lion, Allahu Akbar, its roar is so powerful. It is a ferocious animal. It is heavy. It is big. It is powerful. It is the king of the jungle. But then you go to a circus and you see a little child. A little child, la ilaha illallah. Or a young man with a stick. He barely weighs 100, 120, 140 pounds. The lion is twice as heavy as he is. But he makes it sit, subhanAllah. He makes it sit on a stool. La ilaha illallah. He makes the lion, Allahu Akbar, with a crack of his whip or with a whack from his stick, subhanAllah. He makes it jump through hoops. La ilaha illallah. A lion would jump through fire at the instruction, at the order of a human being. Who is more powerful? The lion or the human being? A lion, Allahu Akbar, can devour a human being in, in a split second just like that. But the fact of the matter is, lions, tigers, everything, Allahu Akbar, the horse is as big as they are, the camel is as big as they are, subhanAllah. And the elephant, as huge as it is, Allahu Akbar, is subservient to mankind. Everything upon the face of the earth is second to you. Is second only to you. La ilaha illallah. Because Allah Jalla wa ala has created this world for you. You go to Africa, you go to Thailand, you go to India, subhanAllah, and you see a little child beating an elephant and making it sit. He holds on to the ear of the elephant and he swings, subhanAllah, and he swings upon the head. He swings on to the head of the elephant and he pokes it with his heel, with the heel of his foot and he makes it go right and go left and slow down and stand up and go forward and speed up and sit down. Allahu Akbar. As huge as they are because everything is subservient to mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything secondary to you, has made it subservient to you, has granted mankind mastery, ownership, superiority, direction, authority, jurisdiction over all of his creation because you are special. You are special indeed. You were created for the next life. This world was created for you so that you can win the next life. So that you can win, you can prove the lofty nature, the nobility that you are. So that you can prove, subhanAllah, that you are special, not just to yourself and to the world, but uh, forever. You are in this life, Allahu Akbar. Beloved brother and sister, every moment that you have been gifted with life in this world is for you to prove that you are a better person. You are not ordinary. You are not simple. You are not like the rest of creation. All of creation is in this world is secondary to you. Look at the sun, Allahu Akbar. The sun gives off ultraviolet rays. It comes here with the sunlight reaches here. Allahu Akbar, it is hot. But you can take a solar panel and put it out there and power a refrigerator with that solar panel and make ice from the heat of the sun 
You can make cold water. You can make ice cream. Subhanallah. What a fantastic, phenomenal creation you are, mankind. Allahu Akbar. You have been given such opportunity, such position, such status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and over the creation of Allah. All of this for what, subhanallah? All of this only so that you may prove for all of eternity that you are worthy of this lofty status, that you are worthy of this position, that you have nobility and kindness, subhanallah. If you look at the earth, the earth, Allahu Akbar, weeds grow naturally and they grow wild, Allahu Akbar. Weeds and the bush grow wild upon the face of the earth. Go to the jungle, you see, Allahu Akbar, or leave a piece of, a, a patch of your garden unattended for six weeks and then it becomes impenetrable. You have to weed and you have to, you know, cut and you have to chop in order to clean it because naturally weeds will grow there. If you don't take care of a, a patch of land, a patch of arable land, it will be taken over by bush. And so too, Allahu Akbar, is the human heart. So too is the human soul. If you don't take care of what you harbor in your heart, Evil will come. Bad things will come. Perversion doesn't need a teacher. You don't need to teach anyone how to lie. You don't need Allah Akbar to teach someone how to cheat. Although people too, subhanAllah, we live in sad and unsacred times. You don't need to teach someone envy and jealousy. You don't need to teach people about lust and lowliness. It comes naturally, subhanAllah. But nobility, you have to work for. Morality, you have to work for. Chastity, you have to work for. Education, you have to work for. All of the good things in this life, you have to work for it. Because Allahu Akbar, mankind were created, we were created, subhanAllah, from the earth. And we take lesson from the earth. Bushes grow wild. Do you know why? Because they are worthless. Bushes and grass and weeds that grow wild on the ground are worthless. What is of worth has to be cultivated. If you want that same patch of land to grow something of value, you have to cultivate it. You have to irrigate it. You have to plow that land. You have to protect it, subhanAllah. The stake lesson, so too is my heart, so too is yours. If you want goodness to come from you, you have to cultivate it. First of all, you have to clean it. You have to purify yourself. You have to purify your mind and heart. You have to purify yourself of ill feelings. Allahu Akbar. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ their heart, Allahu Akbar, has become covered in rust. It has become rusted. Without the dhikr of Allah, without Allahu Akbar, the remembrance of God Almighty, without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the natural state of the heart is a state of devolution. It is a state of, of, of devolving. It is a state of contamination, a, a state of lowliness. If you want something good to come of you and of your life, you have to work on it, you have to struggle, you have to strive, you have to, subhanAllah, make sacrifice. You have to make sacrifice. When you have made a sacrifice, then something good will come. If you want education, you have to sacrifice. If you want expertise in any field, if you want to perfect any skill or even develop it, develop it to some respectable level, subhanAllah, you have to work on it. You have to work. Allahu Akbar. And so Allahu Akbar, one wise man, he said, a man of words and not of deeds is like a garden full of weeds. Subhanallah, a man of words and not of deeds is like a garden full of weeds. Because weeds has no worth, no value. We work hard. Allah, ask a farmer, what does he do? One third approximately of the money farmers spend on their farming is to keep away the weeds and the bush and the grass and the things that will damage their crops. 
And so, subhanAllah, we have to work. Allahu Akbar. We have to make sacrifice. And so the whole of Eid, the whole of Eid al-Adha that passed, Allahu Akbar, it is about learning that we have to sacrifice. That if you want a good, if you want something good, you have to sacrifice. And if you, Allahu Akbar, the only true, the only true proof of love is sacrifice. We're living in a world, subhanAllah, that is constantly being bombarded with hatred and envy. The social media that has become so prominent today and flourishes has become a multi-billion dollar industry in a very short time, subhanAllah, flourishes on the human weakness of envy. It has developed around the need of the human being that is born of envy, the need for attention that is born of envy, subhanAllah, the need to compare oneself to others that is born of envy, the need, Allahu Akbar, on average in an hour, in one hour, if someone, if a, a teenager of the developed world in one hour will look at his phone or her phone a teenager 180 times that's three times every minute subhanallah these are mind-boggling statistics that the phone will get more attention than the parents the teacher will not get as much attention in the classroom as the phone will subhanallah how do they manage to capture the imagination, the attachment, the connection, the engagement of the human mind so profoundly that it will take you away, distract you from the learning process, from the developmental process, from the refinement process, from the process of becoming something, subhanAllah. How? Because they have studied the human ego and they have decided, subhanAllah, to exploit the human ego. That our ego is a driving force for what we do. Our ego, subhanAllah, is a lowly part of the human being. That Allahu Akbar is like the bushes and the weeds of the patch of land that we wish to cultivate. Ego causes weeds to grow, but not on the ground, in our soul. Weeds of lust and hatred and envy. and frustration and disappointment and all kinds of other disqualifying tendencies and activities and so we're living in a world we're living in a world that is filled with hatred what is what can drive hatred so much what is it that can drive hatred for children to hate their fellow classmates look at what is happening subhanallah the stories of bullying in schools Today, la ilaha illallah. And this is a new trend, subhanAllah, that has affected the primary school around the world in the last 15 years. That bullying in primary school is a new phenomenon. And it coincides with the video games, subhanAllah. It coincides with the birth and proliferation and flourishing of the video games because they are designed around the exploitation of the human ego. It brings about cruelty, subhanAllah, and violence and hatred, and it defeats the more important qualities and attributes of a beautiful human soul, like sympathy and mercy and care and kindness and consideration and love and sharing and everything that goes with human nobility. And so we're living in a very difficult world. We're living in a world, subhanAllah, where the most prominent aspect of our communication, our communication today, the most prominent aspects of it are, Allahu Akbar, destructive. They are destructive. A phone is no more a phone. A cell phone is not a phone. It's an entertainment theater. It is where you connect with the lowliest impulses of yourself. 
your lowly self and your ego and your s sense of envy and they show you selected pictures of the happiest moments of the lives of other people and so you begin to compare yourself with that what could be the antidote to this devolving status quo of human society to bring back a sense of sacrifice let us reinstitute and revive a sense of sacrifice for the glory of God and for the benefit of mankind. Subhanallah, subhanallah, we lack Allahu Akbar. The attack today is on three, three areas of mankind. One is on the education and information of the people. People don't know what is going on. They don't understand what is happening to them. They don't understand why is it that they are depressed after looking at TV for four hours. They don't understand why is it that they are depressed and why is it they are losing their eyesight looking at the blue screens of the cell phone and the computer. They don't understand that they are being misinformed, Allahu Akbar, and their emotions are being misled, Allahu Akbar, in di directions and in areas. Into, they are being brought into areas that are not constructive but are destructive, subhanAllah. They are not progressive in any way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy. And so we need to be informed and we need to love because all this hatred, subhanAllah, we need to be informed and we need to love again. We need to become a merciful people. What is it with mankind today that you can look at the TV and look at Allahu Akbar? Look at the killings that are going on around the world. Ordinary people sitting in the securities of their home in civilized society with education and with every facility and everything that would provide a good life for a person and all they can think about is hurting people they're amassing caches subhanallah huge collections of arms and bullets to kill people Allahu Akbar where is this hate coming from? Robert Greene, he spoke about how the masses will be manipulated. And it was done a hundred years ago. We have people like George Orwell who have studied this phenomenon a long time back, subhanAllah. And how the masses can be manipulated if, Allahu Akbar, hatred becomes a common feature in society. And so, Allahu Akbar, entire demo, dem, 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 demographies, Demographies of society, an entire demographic, subhanAllah, an entire demographic of society becomes enmeshed in hatred. La ilaha illallah. We saw it in, 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 in Africa, in Rwanda, between the two seas. SubhanAllah, and you see it again. You saw it, Allahu Akbar, in Burma. Before that, we saw it, and we're seeing it today in India and the fascism that is raising there. We saw it, Allahu Akbar, in Montenegro and in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo and Albania, Allahu Akbar. And we, we're seeing it in Israel every day, la ilaha illallah. This hatred, subhanAllah. And so, what is the antidote to all of this? How can we bring about love again in, in, into a deteriorating society? This society is deteriorating with every passing day. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Afsh, afsh as salam Afsh as salam abaynakum. Afsh as salam abaynakum. Spread peace among yourselves. Allahu Akbar. Afsh as salam abaynakum. And then he said, Allahu at'am al ta'am Allahu Akbar. The formula for the spreading of peace is not Allahu Akbar. There is a real formula for this. Feed the people, Allahu Akbar. The Holy Prophet وسلم, said, Feed the people. And so this is what we sought to do during the days of Qurbani, before and after. Feed the people, subhanAllah. Let people know that you care about them. And if you involve in an activity that is representative of care and you don't even have care in your heart, care will come. A man came to the Holy Prophet ﷺ and he said, O Messenger of God, I feel no, I feel no empathy, I feel no sympathy, no, no mercy, no kindness towards the poor or the unfortunate. And so the Prophet ﷺ said to him, when you see children or you see an orphan, go up to them. 
meet them, rub your hand on their heads, be kind to them, and Allah Jalla wa ala will bring mercy into your heart. Allahu Akbar. This is an explanation of the hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you do the things that is representative of mercy, mercy will come to you. And if you already have mercy, then mercy will grow in you. Allahu Akbar. And so if you have mercy in your heart, if you have kindness, like when the man came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, do you kiss children? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, how sad. How sad for you that Allah Jalla wa ala has removed mercy from your heart. And so if you do the things, because if someone cares about an orphan, he will go to him. He will go to that child and he will be kind to that child or she will be kind to that child. She will pass her hand through the hair of that child, over the head of that child, giving him security, comfort and connection, giving him an identity and lending to him an engagement that will allow him, subhanAllah, to live as an individual. A holistic individual, a fully formed personality will be able to be born, Allahu Akbar, at that instant of connection because the alienation from society will be defeated by that simple act. Because the orphan will not be someone on the margins of society anymore. Just like how you go home or your child or your grandson says to you, Grandpa, look at this. And what do you do? You look, you engage them. You hug them. You pass your hand over their heads. These are acts of kindness because you love them. And so these acts of kindness, Allahu Akbar, will show that you love them. And if you do these same acts, even though you may not have mercy in your heart, mercy will come, subhanAllah. And so we have to do the actions of mercy so that the mercy of God Almighty may come into our hearts. And so don't look at something that, oh, why do you do that? I can't do that. No. Or you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like feeding someone. You don't feel like sharing with someone. You don't feel like smiling. Smile and inshallah the feeling will come. The joy will come. The reward will come. The blessing will come. The ecstasy, the satisfaction, the psychology of triumph will come to you. The depression will go away. The stoic nature of a depraved soul will go away, inshallah, thumma, inshallah. We have to do the actions, inshallah. And so the Prophet wasallam said three things. He said, feed the people. And then he said, wasili al-arham. And connect with your family. Don't just feed strangers and leave your family. Allahu Akbar. You have an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, a grandson, a son, Allah, or a daughter. Allahu Akbar. Feed them and connect with them. Let them come first to subhanAllah. Because you get double blessings from being kind to your family. One, for the kindness. And two, for the establishment of the relations of kinship. SubhanAllah. For the protection of blood relations. These are sacred relations. You didn't choose your family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose your family for you. And so Allah Akbar to maintain that reverence is part of our worship. It is part of our dedication and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah Akbar, the Prophet sallallahu said, Sili al-Arham. And then he said, وَصَلُّوا النَّاسُ نِيَامُ And pray as the world sleeps. Pray Allahu Akbar. And these Allahu Akbar were the activities of the days and the nights of Qurbani. And the days and nights before Qurbani and during Qurbani, subhanAllah. Eid was one day, but the Eid Allahu Akbar is observed for three days, Allahu Akbar. And so all of those nights were sacred. And the nine nights and the ten nights before Allahu Akbar were also sacred. From Hajj it was sacred to here it was sacred. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that opportunity once again. Allahu Akbar. To counteract, to cure the ails of society, the ailments of society, the ills of this world in which we live. This world that is filled, Allahu Akbar, with so much hatred. And Allahu Akbar, it is filled, Allahu Akbar, with a lack of, with a lack of positive community building activism. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the organizations that are dedicated subhanallah to religious and positive activism 
to inform the people, subhanAllah, we have the liqa'at, Allah Akbar of the GIT, and the Jama'at Tabligh, and the CIOG, everyone is doing something, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the efforts of all of the maktab, the maktabs, and the makatib, and the madaris, and the madrasas, and the masajid, and the masjids, and the imams, and the asatidah, all of the ustads, and all of the da'wah workers, because they are all involved, subhanAllah, and so what has happened to the world today is that we have become placid, and complacent. We don't we're not active anymore. There is no vibrancy to society, subhanAllah. Something terrible has happened. Our youth have become so frozen because they have become captives to this little square screen. Two two or three days ago we were discussing, subhanAllah, that this is a new neighborhood. We need to set up a playground for children. We need to set up a playground here for children, for children to come and play. And the brother said, he said, Maulana Nobody's going to come and play anymore. This is all they want. And he took out his phone. He said, this is all they want. From two years old. Two years old. They're on the phone. Or the iPad. Or whatever. And then you see four-year-old children wearing glasses. They have damaged their eyes. Under the very noses of their parents. Allahu Akbar. Children don't play marbles anymore. They don't play cricket anymore. They don't go out. Allahu Akbar. They've become... And our teenagers, Allahu Akbar, the vibrancy of teenage life is lost at this screen. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reinstate activism. Qurbani is not you give, you pay your 20000 or $30,000 for your sheer. Allahu Akbar, one of the butchers, he was complaining that the brothers pay their money and then they come and wait outside in their air-conditioned vehicles for the meat to reach them. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Is that Qurbani? Qurbani, Allahu Akbar, means taqarrub. Taqarrub means to gain qurb, which means to gain closeness by Allah Jalla wa ala. It is a physical activity. You have to be there, you have to go there, you have to be part of it, you have to take care of the animal, you have to, Allahu Akbar, feed it, give it to drink, and make it a sacrifice, and then go house to house and share it out. Take the meat to your grandparents, to your parents, to your neighbors, to your uncles, to your aunts, everybody, subhanAllah, that everybody share and, and benefit from this barakah. And so this is also a moment for the re-energization of activism. And these are the three areas that we are lacking today. Proper information, love and kindness, and activism. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, Allahu Akbar, a successful Eid. May Allah jalla wa ala accept the qurbani of everyone, inshallah, on behalf of those whom have paid for themselves and those whom have passed away. Subhanallah, subhanallah. May Allah jalla wa ala accept this qurbani, subhanallah, as a moment of revival and change for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone that has participated in it. But these, Allahu Akbar, are times for the revival of the most basic humanities of the human being. For you are special and your endeavors are supposed to be special too. You can't be a special being doing nonsense. If you are special, if you are a king, your thoughts, your speech, and your actions has to be royal. It has to be stately. It has to be regal. It has to be great and grand. And so if you are special as a believer, as a source of mercy, as an ummati of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa everything that you do for yourself and for everyone else should be something special, something merciful, something filled with blessings and kindness, and something, insha'Allah, summa insha'Allah, that will bring the blessings of Allah to you and stay with you and with the world, insha'Allah, until the end of time and until the next life, insha'Allah, summa insha'Allah. May Allah jalla wa ala accept all of us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakum Allahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. And thank you very much, Maulana, for that presentation. Let me finally remind our brothers from Georgetown. Uh, we have an, an Arabic reader program. We'll, we'll be starting at Masjid and Najam. MashaAllah. Friday Masha night, Allah. tomorrow night. Alhamdulillah. So it will be running for a month. MashaAllah. Every Friday and Saturday night. So you can come 
and at least at the end of this program, you would have gone a good way in the Arabic reader. So that inshallah, by next Ramadan, you can be in a position to recite from Quran. Inshallah. Inshallah. So inshallah. Don't lose out upon this, it's absolutely free. Uh, this is all we have for you on Perspectives for tonight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our final words, our praise be to Allah.